This is the uh, first of two lectures on iterative deepening depth first search. Uh, iterative deepening depth first search is motivated by trying to achieve the best of both worlds, uh, one from depth first search and one from breadth first search. If you take a look at this table from Poole and Mackler's uh, slide set, you'll see the depth first search is the first line. And it has certain advantages and disadvantages. Uh, one advantage is it runs in uh, linear time as a function of the length of the path. The downside of depth first search, as we know, though, is that it may not halt. At least that's one of the downsides. Um, in some cases, depth first search works great. If you have goals essentially along every path that you're going to be exploring, depth first search is fantastic. If I'm searching for Starbucks in downtown Toronto, for example, depth first search worked great. I could go essentially any path and I could run a Starbucks in very short order. But if I was looking for the Royal Museum in Toronto, um, I could go on and forever and ever down one wrong path. Remember, this is blind search and end up back in Nashville before I ever found the Ontario Royal Museum uh, through search. So depth first search may go off along a, a bad path that uh, may be infinite and may not ever end. And certainly it's not uh, the case that first search uh, will typically find a, uh, an optimal path uh, to a goal state from a start state. Breadth first search, on the other hand, has the advantage that it will halt. You're expanding all the paths uh, more or less uniformly. And uh, regardless of whether goals are sparse or, or uh, densely populated, these paths, you'll eventually hit a, a path, a path which includes a goal, if there is one in the space. And so breadth first search will halt. And in fact, if you measure the optimality of the path by simply the number of steps, uh, breadth first search is also optimal. The problem is it's exponential in space as a function of the length of the path. It's very expensive in terms of uh, space and therefore in practice in terms of time too because we may run out of space and have to go to uh, slower, uh, slower memories rather than having uh, relying on uh, a fast cache. So iterative deepening depth first search motivated by trying to achieve the best of both depth first search and breadth first search while avoiding their difficulties. Here is a uh, pseudocode for iterative deepening search that is given by Poole and Mackworth. At the bottom there, underlined in green, is the actual iterative deepening search algorithm. And the second lecture will actually be coming back to this pseudocode algorithm and studying it in some depth. But you'll notice at the top there's a depth bounded search, uh, which is underlined in orange. And iterative deepening search is going to make use of this depth bounded search idea. Essentially, we're going to be repeatedly performing a depth first search to increasingly deeper levels of a uh, search tree or search graph in search of a goal. And we're going to be redoing a lot of work on each of those searches, as we'll see. So let's take a closer look at uh, iterative deepening search on an example, and we'll talk about depth bounded search along the way. Again, we'll be returning to this algorithm uh, a bit later. So here's a search tree. It's a very simple search tree. A is the start state. It is at depth zero. And you'll notice that um, all the arcs are uh, directional. So A's children are B and C. Uh, Poole and Mackwith would call these the neighbors. But you'll see that they're unidirectional. So if we're at C, uh, A is not a neighbor of uh, C. Um, the operators are not reversible, in other words. Suppose there are no goals uh, at this part of the tree. Uh, any goal is, is much deeper in the tree than this. But we're going to demonstrate iterative deepening depth first search repeatedly performing a depth bounded search, first at depth zero, and then one, and then two, and then three, and we'll conclude the example there. The first step in iterative deepening depth first search is to perform a depth bounded search to depth zero. Now in this tree there's only one node at depth zero, that's the start state, state A. The frontier has been initialized to the start state, which is A, uh, we remove A from the frontier. We check it to see whether it's a goal. A is not a goal. And A is also at the maximum depth bound on this iteration, depth bound zero. And so we don't expand A at this case. Um, we don't expand A and look at A's neighbors. So the order of expansion on this iteration is simply A. We've looked at A and only A, and now we're going to move on to do a depth bounded search uh, 
up to depth 1. We start all over again. The frontier is initialized to A. Uh, A is removed from the frontier. A is not a goal. Uh, A is not at the maximum depth bound, and so we expand A. When we expand A, B and C are children. The frontier includes these uh, two children, B and C. B is removed from the frontier. Uh, B is not a goal. But in this case, B is at the maximum depth bound, and so we don't expand. In this case, thus far, we have expanded both A and B. We remove them from the fear, in other words. Um, in this case, we um, now look at C, which is still on the frontier. C is removed from the frontier. C is not a goal. And in this case, C is at the maximum depth bound. Um, so we do not uh, expand it further. We've now completed a depth first search to depth one. And now, search of a goal, we're going to look to uh, do a depth first search to depth two. We start all over again. A is a frontier is initialized to A. Uh, A is removed from the frontier. A is not a goal. A is not at the maximum depth bound, and so we expand A. We get its two children, B and C, are on the frontier. B is removed from the frontier. B is not a goal. B is not at the maximum depth bound. We're searching to depth bound two in this case, and so we expand B. Notice that we're doing a depth first search to bound depth bound two, not a breadth first search. So we expand B, not C. When we expand B, uh, we place its children, D and E, onto the uh, frontier. The frontier now includes D, E, and C. This is a depth first search. The frontier is implemented as a stack. D is removed from the frontier. D is not a goal. D is at the maximum depth bound, and so we don't expand it further. E is next on the frontier. The frontier contains E and C. E is removed from the frontier. E is not a goal. E is at the maximum depth bound again, and so we don't expand it further. The order of expansion, or perhaps you would prefer the order in which I've removed nodes from the frontier thus far, has been A, B, D, and E. Only C remains on the frontier at this point. C is removed from the frontier. C is not a goal. We expand C. It's, no, it's not at the maximum depth bound. It's at depth 1. We're expanding to or searching to depth 2. We place F and G, its children, onto the frontier. F is removed from the frontier. F is not a goal, but F is at the maximum depth bound of 2, and so we don't expand it further. Only G remains on the frontier. G is removed from the frontier. G is not a goal. G is at the maximum depth bound of 2, and so we don't expand it further. The order of expansion in this uh, depth bounded search to level 2 has been A, B, D, E, C, F, G. Within an iterative deepening uh, search framework, uh, we now continue and do a depth bounded search to depth bound 3. Again, we repeat all the earlier work. We initialize the frontier to A. A is removed from the frontier. A is not a goal. It's, no, it's not at the maximum depth bound. So we expand it. B and C are placed on the frontier. B is removed. B is not a goal. B is not at the maximum depth bound. So we remove it and get its children. We place its children, D and E, onto the frontier. D is removed from the frontier. D is not a goal. D is not at the maximum depth bound of 3, and so we expand D further. We get H and I. Those are placed on the frontier. Again, the frontier is implemented as a stack. H is removed from the frontier. H is not a goal. H is at the maximum depth bound, and so we don't expand it further. I remains at the top of the stack. I is removed from the frontier. I is not a goal, but again, I is at the maximum depth bound of 3, and so we do not expand it. At this point, I'm going to discontinue um, this example. You just notice that up until now, the order in which we've removed nodes from the frontier has been A, B, D, H, and I. And I'll let you continue that. You can pause it, and on the next slide we'll see what the complete order of uh, node removal from the frontier has been, both for depth-bounded search to three as well as the entire iterative deepening depth-first search. Here's the over all the iterations from depth bound 0 to 3, the order in which the nodes were removed from the frontier in the first iteration to depth 0, it was simply A, to depth 1, A, B, C, to depth 2, A, B, D, E, C, F, G. And finally, you can see the 
full enumeration of the depth bounded research at the very end there that I won't uh, repeat. Each iteration of depth first search repeats the same work as the earlier iteration. Uh, because it's expanding a level at a time, it's guaranteed of finding a goal at a minimal level. If the goal was at depth two, we would have stopped at two. If the shallowest goal was at depth three, we would have stopped at level three. Again, we'll look at the algorithm shortly. The advantage, even though it repeats all this earlier work, is that it has linear space complexity as a function of the path length. And that would allow us to use a fast cache memory rather than necessarily going to slower memory. And any speed up is due to the very restricted amount of memory that we actually have to store uh, simultaneously, and in particular in fast memory. In the next video, we'll turn our attention back to the Poole and Mackworth algorithm and look at it in a bit more detail.